and welcome. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal with your Friday afternoon MEM Edge show brought to you from a remote location. I'm in vacay mode a little bit here, but not before sharing with you what took place in the markets last week, a very, very impactful period. We, we will do today is, of course, start by sharing with you some of the more impactful news that drove price action. And then from there, we are going to dive right in, take a look at these markets beyond, look at some of this sector rotation that is shaping up. And then, of course, beyond that into some of these industry groups that are beginning to reverse their downtrends. So a very exciting week, certainly for the bulls. So let's go ahead and get started with those headline news. First up earlier in the week, we did see consumer confidence falling, and that was amid fears of high inflation and high interest rates. And as always, poor news for the economy is good news for the markets because it's all about trying to get that interest rate hike campaign to end. And if we do have weaker data and an outlook that will support that case. We also did get on Wednesday employment, private employment data from ADP, and it did show that the mark, the employment market is slowing the labor market in the month of October. So again, good news, certainly for that interest rate scenario being halted as far as being raised. Also, we did see ISM factory orders drop. They remain below 50. And that's a metric when we are above 50. It indicates that the economy, certainly relative to manufacturing, is expanding, but we are still below. Again, good news there. On Wednesday, we did get news that unanimously the Federal Reserve voted to keep rates flat. No big surprise there. It was more interesting as it relates to going forward what we will be anticipating. Also, we did see in response interest rates pull back, and that's huge news for the markets. We also saw volatility pull back, so good backdrop, certainly over the near term. We also did see October employment numbers and unemployment did rise. And we only saw a modest increase in employment figures. So net net, it appears as if the labor market is cooling off. So really lots of good news as far as the backdrop that would support a continuation of this downtrend reversal that we are currently seeing in the markets. Next week, Fed Chair Powell will be speaking at two events, as well as several governors. So all ears on what they may have to state. So from here, let's go ahead and take a look at those markets and the underlying activity beneath the surface. And here we are. This is a daily price chart of the S&P 500. And those of you that watch my show each week, welcome back. You will recognize this chart from the last couple of weeks, where I've highlighted the characteristics that signaled a downtrend reversal going into January of this year, as well as that March period. And you can see that particular rally was quite expansive. So let's take a look at where we closed for the week. And again, very briefly back here, that upside was signaled by a move of the S&P 500 above each of its key moving averages, that RSI in positive territory trending upward, and likewise with the faster moving stochastics in both cases. So here we are after this week's 6% rally in the S&P 500. Indeed, we've broken above each of these moving averages, and we have an RSI and stochastics above 50 and heading upward. So certainly a nice backdrop there. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ was up a little more than the S&P 500. And we can see very similar metrics with a close above that 50-day moving average, that RSI above 50 and trending upward. Likewise, with the stochastics and very nice volume characteristics indicating accumulation. You like to get that confirmation that investors want in. Now, from here, what we'll go ahead and do is take a look at the underlying 11 sectors in the S&P 500. I've gone ahead and added this RSI indicator and sorted this two-month daily price chart view of these sectors in descending order by strength. 
And notice when I updated that, you can see technology up here front and center. Now, last Friday, I did share with you the fact that technology was up here in the forefront, in addition to utility and REIT stocks, which had been up in number one and two spot. Tech was third. Here it is up here, very much at the forefront. The group was up 6.6%. .6 and of note for me and for my work is the fact that Apple and Microsoft both underperformed modestly, but underperformed the overall tech group. And they are the heaviest weighting. They account for a 40% weighting of that tech sector. So when you see that those big heavyweights are not the primary driver of a particular, in this case, technology, uh, that is going to be very, very interesting certainly because you want to be aware of where is that strength emanating from and how you can participate. And that's what this show is all about. We'll get into that as we move forward. Let's take a look at some of these other groups up here at the forefront. I mentioned to you that interest rates did pull back and we'll take a look at that yield on the 10 year. One of the primary benefactors, or there are several groups that are gonna fare better in a lower rate environment. And certainly REIT stocks would be among them. This was the top performing sector up 8.6%. And the reason is these real estate stocks, if they are going to expand their portfolio and seek growth, they will want a lower interest rate backdrop because it will lower their cost of any new acquisitions. You can see this big jump also related to earnings. And I'm going to share a couple of names in here. Last up is a report that S&P Global put out on Thursday that REIT stocks and in particular areas had seen a very big spike in short uh, selling. And hence, that's another reason for the push into these REIT stocks. As we move through here, we can see financials up here at the forefront, second best group up seven and a half percent. Uh, after this, I will share with you a year to date view, and you'll see both areas were very depressed going into this week. But if we do see a lower rate environment that would be bullish for bank stocks in particular, they have been noting in their earnings call that high interest rates have really been reducing their lending activity, which is a primary area of profit gaining for these bank names. So lower rates, good there. Let's go ahead and move forward. Take a look at some of these other areas that are also in these beginning stages of reversing their downtrend. Here we are. This is consumer discretionary XLY. I will share with you the retail uh, chart as we move through, but certainly the Amazon's 8.5% gain helped as did Tesla's 6% gain, but there are other areas and I did write about it last Friday. If you go to the articles tab here and look up MEM, you can access that view as it relates to how consumer spending has picked up tremendously in Q3. And I did share several names in that article. So let's go ahead and move forward. Take a look at some of these other areas that are down here in this lower quartile. Healthcare is still struggling. So we are seeing that particular group was at the bottom up only three and a half percent, but that's compared to the broader markets up 6%. Energy struggled. It was the weakest this week up 2.4%. However, let's in this particular segment by taking another look here at communication services, because this was up 7.7% for the week. Nice high volume here. And we can see this downtrend reversal that's shaping up. So nice and very good to see communication services and technology, the two leadership areas of the market year to date, potentially and realistically regaining their leadership status. So let's go ahead and take a look beyond at some of these industry groups. And I use highly impactful ETFs. And by impactful, I mean they're very helpful as far as getting your arms even further around where this relative outperformance and strength is shaping up so that you can participate in that. So up here, gold, this is kind of a lagging uh, from prior weeks being up here at the forefront because it was flat for the week. 
but GLD does still have positive momentum characteristics. But let's move on to an area that is new to this upper quartile, which is where the strength is relatively. I've added that RSI and sorted it in descending order. And here we are. This is XLRE. This is the retail S&P retail ETF. And it was up 7.2% a number of names coming out with earnings. And if we look at this view of XRT, you'll see that it really was down and out well below these February peaks. And some of these areas and names in this area are really seeing nice movement after reporting constructive earnings. Again, all about that Q3 GDP. Those of you that want to dig in, take a look. It was growth there was primarily due to consumer spending, and it is translating into strong earnings for many of these retailers. So as we move forward, IWM was the top performer among the broader market indices, up 7.5%, but not quite enough to fully reverse its downtrend. But we do now have a positive RSI, nice MACD black line up through the red crossover. Uh, we are finding resistance at this downward trending 50 day, but that is a significant move on high volume. And again, it's really in line with this. What is actually taking place is downtrend reversals in very deeply sold, oversold areas of the broader markets. Let's take a look at some of these other areas here that are in the beginning stages of potentially reversing their downtrend. This is IHI, the US Medical Devices, and take a look, steep losses in the area, but this is what you want to do. You want to be aware of this beginning downtrend reversal from here, and this is what my work is all about, is capitalizing on this potential reversal by identifying stocks that have already overcome these potential hurdles here and are in a better position from which to spring higher. We can see this oversold position here in the RSI. We've had several downtrend reversal attempts, and here we are, that RSI now up here in positive territory. For those of you that haven't already, you can trial my MEM Edge report for a nominal fee for four weeks. It's a twice weekly report. I bring that up because I will be really digging in quite a bit more deeply into capitalizing on these downtrend reversals that are shaping up. So we will not leave this area without taking a look at two more groups and actually ETFs or indexes. And this is TNX. That's the yield on that 10-year treasury. And take a look. This is fantastic news. Something that I have been harking about for some time is the fact that we absolutely need to see interest rates recede before we will get any traction and up upside movement in the broader markets. So we did close the week at that 4.5. Now, I'm not saying that we are absolutely green pastures ahead because this is still relatively elevated at that 4.5% level, but certainly we are going in the right direction. I talked about that move here in March, and we can see this nice rally that took place. Take a look. This also was a period when interest rates were declining. However, we were down in the three and a half percent range here before we were able to get that really significant advance. So definitely constructive. Ideally, would like to see more by way of a reduced interest rate environment. Other also here, take taking a look at volatility, and it is down at about 15. So anything below 16 is going to indicate a more confident investment backdrop. As this volatility VIX index increases, it's really called the fear index, and it's telling you that there is just enough uncertainty out there to keep investors at bay, but it is receding. So we do have good news there as well. Last up, I want to share with you a view of the equal weighted S&P 500. And the purpose here is, in addition to those leadership areas coming back into play, you want to see broadening out and breadth and really involvement by investors in areas outside of those big mega cap names. And this view here with the equal weighted S&P 500, and I'll pull up a weekly here, 
you'll see that it was up about 6%. So in line with the markets, but it is something that you want to see as well if you're, and of course we are, on the lookout for a more sustainable rally, you will want to see broad participation. Now, from here, I am going to share with you a stock that we perhaps have reviewed here before, but it's a company that already reported their earnings about a month ago. A lot of these downtrend reversals that are popping all over are names that have reported either last week or this week, and you want to have a longer term view of what to be on the lookout for as a downtrend reversal matures. So let's go ahead back to this. Uh, we're looking at Nike. And I wanted to begin by sharing with you a daily price chart of Nike. So it looks like I'm going to have to go ahead and enter that up here. And what we are viewing is a stock that, of course, was very, very depressed going into their earnings at the beginning of this quarter. So you can see in that October period, that gap up that took place, it was all about the company coming in with earnings that were ahead of estimates. So we can see this initial gap up that took place in Nike. It pulled back and then had a subsequent move. Now, what I want to share with you as well is when looking in particular at this pullback, let's just take a moment here and I'll share with you a quick view of the NASDAQ actually, or um, yeah, I still have that up over here. And what I wanted to point out to you is this pretty severe pullback here. And this is the latter part of October. The reason I'm pointing that out to you is because if we look at Nike and we see this pullback, it really was not as um, much as the broader markets. It held in relatively well. That's something that you want to see if we do experience another pullback and you're looking for names to continue to reverse their downtrend. So here we are on the daily price chart. Nike broke above this 21, eventually above that 50 day, but your RSI did trend into positive territory back here. We had nice high volume and you had that nice MACD crossover. From here, I am going to share with you an intraday chart of Nike just to get you tuned in when these stocks come out with earnings, for instance, they gap up what would one use as precedence for a name that has mostly successfully been continuing to reverse that downtrend. So here we are at the end of September on that earnings release. And you can see that gap up and then a pullback. And that was certainly a more challenging environment for the broader markets. But if you are using this intraday one hour chart as your guide of note during this uh, hourly, you're going to see a lot more bouncing around than in the longer term charts. But as long as the stock continues to find support above the five and 13 hour simple moving average, and that RSI remains up above that net neutral, you're in good standing. Now, this break with the RSI, a move below the moving average and a negative MACD, this is all about that late October pullback that took place in the broader market. So it's not gonna be as concerning because it's in line with the markets. And then of course, moving back into an uptrend, a move above the moving averages and that RSI in positive territory. And I think that's just a great way to capitalize and look at some of these names that are in the beginning stages of reversing their downtrends. So let's take a look. We talked about XLRE. I'll share with you a couple of names here. And actually we'll share one name. And when you are looking for sub groups within a broader sector, you will want to take into account for instance, interest rates are bearing or going lower. So here we are with EQIX, and it's not the prettiest of charts, rather dicey, but here we are with this reversal and move above these moving averages, RSI MACD now in positive territory. And the company uh, is specializes in mortgage related REIT activity. So hence, they are going to have a bitter, bigger larger bounce when this particular interest rates do decline and they come in with 
positive numbers. Another name that we can take a look at here that really had a nice bounce, and if you're on the lookout for that continuation rally, this is Shopify, and it found it rallied over 20%. You can see what took place on Thursday, a move above these moving averages, MACD, RSI in positive territory, and here again, this intraday is is going to be your friend. And by that, I mean, it's going to really help give you a sense of whether the stock is potentially going to pull back or will it continue to rally beyond that gap up. So what's happening here more recently is these gaps up, you are experiencing most of the move for that day within that first hour, but then beyond that, moving on to, for instance, the next day, and you can see that today we had a nice 3% rally and you will want to see that the RSI remains above that net neutral, and then also that MACD up here in positive territory to signal that there could be further near-term upset upside price action for that name. One last company we can look at, they are due to report next Wednesday, and that is Uber. This downtrend reversal with a gap up above that 50-day moving average continuation rally we're not quite up here in positive territory yet with that MACD. But again, as an exercise, we're going to take a look. And actually on the weekly longer term view, we do have nice positive momentum shaping up there relative to their uh, RSI and MACD remaining in positive territory. So we'll just take a quick look here at that hourly on Uber again, where we had that gap up yesterday. As long as we remained above those moving average, we did have a nice 3% continuation rally today. Guys, I'm going to leave it there. I hope you... And guys, I am going to leave it there. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. If you like what you've seen, go ahead and hit that like button and share any comments you might have. Always welcome your questions. Have a great weekend.